Asante sana. Please let's take our seats. Mr. Deputy President, Prime Cabinet Secretary, the speakers of the two houses, our speaker this morning, former Prime Minister of Ethiopia, and we thank you very much. Guests from different parts of uh, the world, from East Africa, our friends from Uganda, our friends from Tanzania, our friends from the United States, United Kingdom, and all the other countries that are here, fellow Kenyans, Hamjambo. God is good, and all the time, Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Um, it is true that uh, I have been summoned by the men conference. <laughs> and uh, I, have, I will go and answer. <laughs> but let me say this, that I am truly delighted to join you at this opportune event as we rally the people of Kenya to unite in prayer and supplication before God. Our nation is founded on the recognition of the almighty God of all creation, and it is in our constitution, and sustained by the devotion to God and hope in his deliverance. Our faith as a people is intentional and indelibly inscribed in the fundamental instruments of our nationhood. If you read our first chapter of our constitution, that's what it says. At this annual gathering, we are reminded of the basic fact that without prayer and the acknowledgement of God, our creator, we are utterly without any hope. Proverbs 29.18 reminds us that without vision, the people perish. Pastor Mitri Rahel from Palestine says, hope does not wait for vision to appear. Hope is vision in action today. And I think uh, our speaker has gone to lengths to explain to us and to speak to us about it. Therefore, the vision of, of the vision that keeps a nation together as it marches forward is the fruit of hope, a hope that is anchored on the unrelenting faith in God. We are told in Hebrews 11 that faith is being sure of what we hope for, uncertain of things that we do not see. Similarly, the words of Isaiah, that those who hope in the Lord, he will, he will renew their strength, that they will run and not grow weary, walk and not faint. This rings so true when we reflect on our journey and the journey we have traveled as a country over the last 60 years. We've had our challenges, but because of our faith in God and because we have believed, today we stand tall as a nation in our region and as a nation in our continent. My deputy has explained where we were a few months ago. We had a big drought that decimated close to two and a half million heads of livestock. For the first time, we were tracking water for wildlife We went to Nyayo Stadium and prayed. And God gave us rains. 
Today, we have enough food in Kenya. It is amazing what God can do. Sometimes we may want to believe that maybe we did something. And maybe surely we did. Maybe we made fertilizer available. Maybe we made seeds available. Maybe we supported farmers. But that would have come to nothing if God had not given us rain. We have traveled as a nation. And I'm very proud today that the Kenya that many people thought and believed that we were going to have a debt default. Today, we are in a different trajectory. And it is because we trust in God. Hope has always been the light that has shone brightest in our darkest of times, a beacon that has always guided us through the storms of life and the challenges of a nation. Every time we have been tested as a nation, we may have at times wobbled or even tripled, but we did not fall. We have always emerged stronger and more united. When our forefathers and mothers rose against our colonial masters and fought for independence of our great country, it was in the hope that their resistance would yield a better tomorrow, a tomorrow where their children would walk free from the debilitating bondage of poverty, discrimination, disease, and ignorance, as we were told by our forefathers. Without a doubt, we have covered significant ground in tackling the challenges that continue to face our country. But there is also no doubt that we still have a long road ahead to travel. At this prayer breakfast last year, I reminded you of the need to be thankful and to pray for our nation given how far we had come and the numerous challenges we had to contend with. A few weeks ago, as you all know, we went through another storm of floods and we lost 
ministers who are here, principal secretaries who are here, my deputy and myself, we are privileged to be leaders in Kenya at this time. And it is true that we understand, all of us, what the challenges are and what we need to do. I ask all of us to have the courage to do the right thing, however difficult it is. It is the only way we can pull our country and take our country into the future. We have, by the grace of God, now have reduced the price of food commodities. We are, however, yet to solve the problem of unemployment. We must continuously work together. I want to ask members of parliament who are here. We have set our target on the digital space to create jobs. I was in Ruiru, in uh, Simon Kingara's constituency, when we launched an ICT hub there that is hiring 5,000 Kenyans. I was very proud to see them at work. Every member of parliament seated here, and those who are not here, have an opportunity to replicate that in every constituency in Kenya. That is why we changed the law on CDF, so that you can have an opportunity to set up an ICT hub. And one of the big announcements that was made in my trip in America is an investment by Microsoft, an American company, G42, a UAE company, EcoCloud of Kenya, and the government of Kenya, on the first ever data center that will use renewable energy. And it is an investment of $1 billion. And it is going to help us build the ecosystem to support the digital journey that we are engaged in as a nation. And you, as members of parliament, have an opportunity to be part of that momentum by setting up ICT hubs in every ward in the Republic of Kenya. I am very confident that working together in that manner and without minding whether this constituency belongs to a member of parliament who is in government or in the opposition, we are all one nation. Our target is to make sure that every child in Kenya has an opportunity because we want to enhance the number of people who have incomes. We also manage to negotiate additional investments under the AGOA agreement. I got a confirmation from the American government that they are going to renew the Africa Growth and Opportunities Act that today gives us close to 50,000 jobs here in Athi River. And now we have another six special economic zones set up in Kenya. And more American companies are going to set up camp in our nation because of the agreements we have put in place to create more jobs. We must continuously, deliberately, intentionally 
find opportunities for employment for the people of Kenya, the young people of Kenya. I also had occasion to meet many Kenyans in diaspora. In fact, it was a very interesting meeting in Atlanta. There was close to 1,500 Kenyans in one meeting. And it was amazing to see a meeting as big as this one in Atlanta of Kenyans. And it is because I also believe we have opportunity for creating more opportunities for employment for Kenyans in the diaspora. And that is why Bore here and Madime are engaged and uh, Rosalind Njogu are working on 19 bilateral labor agreements. We just completed one with Germany so that we can create pathways for employment of the people of Kenya in different parts of the world because we have one of the best human resource capital anywhere in the world. Therefore, despite all the challenges, I believe strongly that every generation is called upon to rise up and tackle the challenges of their time. We must rise up as the leaders of today to deal with the challenges that affect our nation. I believe that this is exactly why we were elected to office about two years ago with hope, patriotism, love for country, and love for one another, working hard with determination and prayer, I believe that we are up to the task of confronting some of our most urgent challenges. As we remember the words of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., who I had an opportunity to visit his mausoleum, who said, that everything that is done in the world is done through hope. Our plan as a country is purpose purposefully designed to provide sustainable solutions to some of our most pressing and present challenges. We have worked on food security, we are working on employment, we are building the profile of our country. Today, Kenya is respected. That is why we hosted the Africa Climate Summit last year. We hosted the International Development Associations with the World Bank to discuss concessional funding. Yesterday, we hosted the Africa Development Bank uh, Summit Next week, I will be addressing the G7. Last week, Kenya was given the privilege to be the African country to a state visit to the United States in 16 years. It speaks volumes of the favor of God upon our nation. And so, I have sometimes spoken to you as fellow citizens of Kenya that we may not agree on how to take Kenya forward but we all agree that we have a common purpose and cause to take our country to the next level. All of us. And that is what matters, that we all agree that we must move Kenya to the next level. 
I said yesterday at the ADB conference, because many of you saw uh, me pushing in the United States the agenda of Kenya. But half the time, I spend pushing the agenda of the continent. And I said yesterday that there is no prosperous Kenya without a thriving Africa. And I want to repeat here today that there will be no prosperous county without a thriving Kenya. All of us, our destiny is intertwined. We must carry every village. We must carry every constituency. We must carry every county to make Kenya truly great. And that is why I speak to you leaders as the father figure of the nation that we work together. We build bridges. We build synergy. We have a common destiny. There will be no success of one county as against another. We, we, we must pull together and succeed together as a nation. I want to repeat the words in Kiswahili of Matthew 5.9. Neno la mungu linasema, heri wapatanishi. Those who unite people, those who bring people together, those who make peace, those qualify to be the children of God. We must do that together, all of us. Of course, our democratic culture is a powerful source of resilience and dynamism and an anchor of unity and strength. Regardless of our intense or even how intense our political contests get, and despite the heat of our debate, we must never forget what a great country God has given to us and the opportunity we have together to build a strong, secure, peaceful, united, and prosperous nation. It must always inform what we do. We are called upon to be optimistic about our country because we have every reason to be. We see hope in the beauty of our land, in the richness of our diversity, and the diversity of our culture and the immense potential of the Kenyan people. We hear hopes of stories of ordinary Kenyans who have done extraordinary things and overcome extraordinary challenges, who have risen above adversity and went on to make positive impact in their communities, in their localities, and in our nation. We build hope by working together towards common goals of prosperity for all of us, by supporting one another and by contributing to the common good. We strengthen hope by promoting peace, justice, and reconciliation. And we perfect hope by investing in education, healthcare, and infrastructure. We can nurture hope by protecting our environment, alleviating the effects of climate change, and preserving our rich national, national resources. In conclusion, let us embrace one another as a nation united by hope, laboring collectively in hope, and working together towards hope. Let us build a Kenya of opportunity for everyone a land of prosperity where everyone can live and thrive in dignity and where our hopes and dreams meet fulfillment through work, 
and faith. You all know what our national anthem says. And because we are going through a budget process, and because we have stabilized our economy, we're going to now focus on how to create jobs, making sure that the road network that has been beaten by the floods, many roads that had stalled, that we're going to put more resources in making sure that we repair and we rebuild and we, and we complete the roads that are uh, awaiting. I was very um, surprised and pleased, pleasantly surprised, let me put it. When I called heads of parastatals, chairmen and CEOs, and I explained to them the situation where we are, and I told them, look, each and every one of you need to go back and reduce your budgets, especially the budgets of recurrent expenditure by 30%. I was pleasantly surprised that each and every parastatal was willing to contribute to making sure that we live within our means. And each one of them went back and they have submitted their reports and they have actually reduced their recurrent budgets by 30%. And that is even the reason why even my office and that of my deputy and that of my prime cabinet secretary, we have said we are going to start with ourselves. We must lead from the front, tighten up our belts, invest in the places that will make sure that we create broader prosperity, invest in making sure our dairy is working. Our flowers are working. Our coffee and tea are working. The places that create opportunity for the majority of Kenyans are working. And I promise you that as a steward that I have the privilege to be, we will act responsibly and we will manage the affairs of the country with integrity and with selflessness so that we can build a nation of hope that people know that their government cares. Let me say this, or let me disclose. You know, when I saw the debate in Kenya, as to how I travel to the US. You know? And there was, you know, all manner of uh, figures, you know. Uh, this plane is this big and it is like this. Google here, Google there. This one must have costed 200 million because the president needed to, uh, to arrive in style in the U.S. <laughs> holding Rachel's hand. <laughs> you know, I am a very responsible steward. Believe you me. There is no way I can spend 200 million. There is no way. In fact, let me disclose here that it costed the Republic of Kenya less than 10 million. Because, let me tell you, I am not, I am not a madman. When I was told the cheapest uh, plane was 70 million. I told my office, go book Kenya Airways. 
Yeah. So when some friends of mine heard that uh, I was going to travel Kenya Airways, and uh, we have built a big reputation as a country. We have built friends. Some friends told me, how much do you want to pay? I said, I'm not ready to pay more than 20 million. They said, bring 10 million, we will give you the plane. Look at me, Kenyans. Look at me again. I must lead from the front. As I tell others, as I tell others to tighten up their belt, mine must be where to begin. So relax, you know, and, and, and the debate must end because I am that responsible. And it is going to be that way. We are going to make sure that we tighten up our belts, we live within our means. In fact, my plan is that in three years, we must have a balanced budget. We cannot continue <laughs> to have a budget that has a deficit that before you begin, you have to borrow. I have told every person, including the leadership of Treasury, Professor Ndungo, Kipto, and all the others, that that's where we are going. And I'm very proud of the support I get from my economic team, led by Professor Ndi and all the other people there. They're doing a good job. Now, in conclusion, I said in our national anthem, we pray that we shall flourish in a land of plenty. That is the Kenya we all want, and that is the Kenya we all aspire for. I want to thank you very much for coming for this uh, prayer breakfast. I, I, you are the best country that I know. And if I had another chance to be born, I would want to be born Kenyan. God bless you all. God bless our great country. Thank you very much.